Good morning. Uh, I'm Sebastian Anthony at Extreme Tech. Uh, excuse my messy desktop. Uh, today we're going to take a look at the Windows 10 technical preview start menu, which makes its illustrious return. As you can see, you click the bottom and up it comes. Um, I've played around with this a bit. Um, this isn't the default start menu. The default start menu is just two rows of live tiles, not this messy bunch over here. Um, you also get Skype and other icons like that. Um, unfortunately, I removed the default live tiles and there doesn't seem to be an easy way to uh, bring them all back. So uh, yeah, you just have to trust me when I tell you what the defaults are. Um, anyway, um, down the left-hand side, you have pretty standard stuff. Um, yeah, kind of like Windows 7 and Vista, but not quite. Um, there's no options to change you can change the color, but that's about all you can change right now. Um, I assume it's going to look like this rather than the standard kind of uh, Windows 7 or Vista kind of plain list selection box. Uh, you can see you have a fly out menus from here. Um, you have the power button up here, which I'm not going to click for obvious reasons. You have all apps, which shows you all the apps. Um, I haven't looked through this list of apps, so um, apologies if there's anything embarrassing in there, but I don't think there's anything too bad installed on my computer. Um, you can add things from here, so you can add maps over here, you can resize it, you can resize wide, you can turn it off so it just becomes a standard tile, you might want to turn them off so on. You can keep adding these things almost indefinitely, I believe. Let me and I think my screen is too big to show you, but let's see if we can do this. I'm trying to make them large, but uh, oh well. Anyway, if you do make it big enough, you can make the entire start screen wide enough to occupy the entire screen, and then you get a scroll bar at the bottom, um, just like on the Metro start screen in Windows 8. Um, you have a search box, which look, works just like um, the standard start menu thing. So you can type in, for example, uh, oh, that worked better when I tested this earlier. It should have popped that up. Anyway, you have that. You can run programs directly from here. So you can run, for example, news. Hang on, that popped up on my other screen. But there you go, there's news. Uh, the one true language. Uh, then you have options. So you have uh, the standard taskbar options from Windows 8. Um, you have kind of similar navigation options. Um, like I covered previously, uh, the charms bar doesn't work right now, so this top one does nothing. Um, these bottom options, I think, become available in a moment. Um, and here you can see that you can use the start screen instead of the start menu, but that requires um, I have to log in and log out. Um, the only real interesting thing here is the customize option. So this is how you bring the menu back to more like Windows 7. You can add the control panel, you can add devices. You can see I already added this PC, um, that's not actually on by default. You do this, and now you have control panel here, which is nice, devices. You can right click this PC to get into the standard you know, system setup type stuff. Ah, my overclock is missing for some reason. What happens if I click devices? Oh, okay. Yeah, so you can see there's still this weird dichotomy between Metro and desktop. Uh, I think that's most of what I can show you in the new start menu. 
Oh, look. I hovered over it and it went. <laughs> I didn't even click it. That's interesting. And these obviously have fly out things as well. Uh, you can pin to this list. Okay. You can pin. These are already pinned. I guess you can pin these. There you go. Oh. Okay. That's over there now. Um. Okay. And then can you put this? Yeah, there you go. Okay. So I can pin it, but by dragging it. That's interesting. Okay. Um, yeah, so as you can see, oh, okay. I was hoping that would just, that, cre that created a shortcut. Okay. That's interesting. You can uninstall Metro apps from here as well, it seems, along with unpin. Um, okay, uh, we're going to switch to the start screen menu now. Um, obviously, I have to stop this video for a moment because I can't keep recording uh, while it's logging out, unfortunately. So you see, you click apply, and now I'm going to sign out. Back in a moment, guys. Okay, we're back. I've signed out, uh, and I'm now back in Windows 10. Um, here's the start screen. Um, it's exactly the same as Windows 8 from what I can tell. Um, I'll leave it here for a second so you can be nosy and see what I've installed. Um, this part of the start screen is identical as well. Um, interestingly, some of the Metro interface is still here. Um, it seems there was another, let's see if I can find it. Yeah, settings. I couldn't find this panel from the desktop. It seems like it's only available in this Metro start screen, which is interesting. <laughs> and then that opens in a window. So I guess the weird kind of dichotomy between Metro and desktop lives on. It's interesting. Um, and again, because we've now switched to the start screen, uh, we have a few more options here. Um, charms still don't work, even though they should, it seems. Um, and then you have these options here, which appear to be identical to Windows 8. Boot straight to desktop, um, which screen you want it to appear on. Um, that's useful for multi-monitor setups and things like that. Um, yeah, I think that's about it. Um, this was Sebastian Anthony for Extreme Tech. This was the start menu in Windows 10 technical preview. Uh, goodbye for now.